Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to show you how to get started with using Python, uh, both on the university's cluster machines uh, or the uh, Windows virtual desktop. Um, and I'll also talk about how to install Python um, on your own computer if you haven't already installed it. Now, of course, you'll probably have been uh, using Python installed on your own computer last year. Um, and if you installed it fresh last year, you don't need to do anything. You, especially if you use the Anaconda Python distribution, that I think Dr. Barker was recommending, then you should be all set to go and um, you don't need to worry. Okay, so if you log into the uh, clusters at the university or if you use the Windows Virtual Desktop service, then um, a lot of the software is not actually um, directly runnable immediately. Um, the university is using this Apps Anywhere system to uh, make software available for you, including uh, Anaconda Python. So when you log in, it'll probably bring up this Apps Anywhere window. Um, and if it doesn't, there's an icon on the desktop that you can click instead. Um, and then the first thing you go and do is in the little search box there, you uh, want to search for Oops, why is it not typing for me? There we go, Anaconda. Um, and it'll come up and say Anaconda Python 3.7. You may, especially if you installed Anaconda recently, you might have Python 3.8. That's fine, don't worry about it. Um, there are a number of small differences, but um, I think I will be trying to avoid using any of those 3.8 features. So everything I teach you is good for Python 3.7. Okay, so you just hit launch um, and it goes away and thinks about things. Um, and it says it's launching. What it actually is doing is installing uh, Anaconda Python into the cluster machine or into your uh, virtual desktop. Um, and so we have to sit through and just wait for it to finish doing that. Um, and typically it takes uh, less than a minute or so and it pops up a box and saying, oh yes, it's done, okay. And then after that, uh, on the cluster machine or the virtual Windows desktop start menu, um, oops, there will be uh, a new menu entry, um, Anaconda. So um, uh, previously you've been uh, used to using the uh, Jupyter Notebooks and that's fine. You can go off and carry on using that. Um, in this year, we'll also be making use of a different Python front end called Spider, which is installed here. And that comes as part as standard with the Anaconda uh, Python distribution. So even if you've installed Anaconda on your own machine, you almost certainly have Spider. And we'll talk more about that um, in the second lab of the semester. Um, so to run them, then you can just do as you'd have done before, um, just click on the link and it'll go away and um, it will go and fire up a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, again, when it's thought about it. Um, I have to say, I think the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop machines are sometimes a little bit slower than they could be, um, but they get there in the end. Um, no, I don't need to go and sync my profile. Um, and so you can um, start a new notebook or you can access a notebook that you've downloaded from somewhere um, as you need to. Okay, so that's if what you're doing if you're um, uh, on uh, a cluster machine or if you're using the virtual desktop. How about if you want to install Python on your own machine? Um, maybe you've bought a new machine since the first year. So in that case, what you want to go and do is you want to go and uh, search for Anaconda Python uh, in your favorite search engine. Um, and you're looking for this individual edition, Anaconda. So when you go to the website there, um, it will go and offer you a download link, and it has download links for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, if you're on a Chromebook, um, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, probably the best advice at the moment is to uh, use the Windows Virtual Desktop environment um, and run uh, Python from there. Um, it is, in theory, possible to install um, Anaconda Python into a Chromebook, but it's sort of extra complicated. So um, what you do is you just hit download and it'll go away and download an installer, um, which uh, you can ignore the 
the registration box. You don't need that. You can see it's just downloading it straight away. It's a fairly chunky download, um, 477 megabytes. So it's best to go and do it if you've got decent Wi-Fi somewhere. Um, and then uh, when you install it, um, which it may not let me go and do because I'm on a, a cluster machine. Um, yes, indeed, it's telling me it says on a Windows virtual desktop machine, it's saying um, it's not going to let me do that, which is fair enough because it doesn't want me installing things on the university computer. Um, so you'll be able to install it, just um, accept all the defaults and let it run through. And then it will, if you're on Windows, it'll populate your start menu. Um, if you're on a Mac, um, then uh, it should um, give you access to um, uh, Jupyter Notebooks um, and so on uh, from the Mac doc. Um, and if you're on Linux, um, it's a little bit more complicated, but it'll be um, accessible via the command prompt.